In this section, we'll be working on emails. We'll be configuring our emails inside the classes that we have to, and then we'll set up a SendGrid API, and we'll call that to send our emails. So let's get started with all of that from the next video. What we want to start on is sending emails. So for sending emails, we will be using SendGrid, and using this, you can send up to 100 emails for free every day. So, we'll start for free here. And we will register for an email. Let's accept this and create an account. We will enter a few information and get started. We will integrate using Web API and hit start. We'll choose this and we'll choose C sharp. Here we just need to give it a name. So we'll call this bulky book and we'll create a key. We will have to copy this key. And what we will do next is while we are on this page, let's switch back to the application and let's go to the app settings.json. So we'll open up the app settings.json file and in here we will add a send grid key. We'll paste our key that we copied and let's also add a send grid user here. We'll switch back here and we'll scroll down. Here they are showing us how we can do the send grid message sending. So I can just copy this static content. We'll use this later on and let's go to the next verification integration. Now we need to verify this later on after we send our first email. We'll skip this step for now. But for now we have created a SendGrid account and we added the key here. Let me call the name here as bulky book and you can use the username as you wish. That being said, let's continue working on setting up the email sender in the next video. Before we continue on to the next video, I want to edit the existing code. SendGrid had recently add a modification to their course. Because of which I'm adding this video for everyone who faces an issue with SendGrid. What you have to do, if you see the, if the name or email in this SendGrid account looks different, do not worry because I had to create a new email just to just to show you what you have to do. Once you log into your SendGrid account, you'll scroll down. You have to confirm your email address. So we will resend the email confirmation and you will type in your email address. We'll send the confirmation. Here we will confirm our email address and we'll hit confirm email address. So that should confirm our email address and redirect back to SendGrid. Once that is confirmed, before we send out email, since April of 2020, SendGrid needs a sender verification. So for that, what we have to do is we have to go inside settings. In here, we have the sender authentication. So make sure you click on the sender authentication and you have to validate the sender identity. Here, if you have a domain name with your email, you can use that option. But if you are using Gmail, you can use single sender verification. We'll hit the get started here. So we have entered the details here. If you enter a Gmail address, it will give you a warning that from free email is not recommended. If you have a domain email, that would be the best option. But as of now, Gmail and Hotmails are working. Yahoo is not working if you will use for SendGrid. Once you make that change, we'll scroll down and we will hit the create button. Then in here, we'll right click, we'll click resend verification. So great, we have the verification email and we'll verify the single sender. Once you verify that your sender verification is successful and we can proceed with the next steps that I show in the course. 
In here, if you remember, inside the register page model, if we scroll down to the on post, we commented out the code to send email. Let's uncomment this code because we'll be implementing on how to send emails. Once you uncomment this, let me switch back to the browser. Once we sign up here, if you want, you can go back here to the C-sharp code and we had the code that we copied last time. So make sure you copy this, we'll go back to our application and we will open up the email sender class which is inside utility. In here, let me paste the execute method. Now what we have to do is we need to get the app settings options which is the send grid key and user. We will implement something so that we can fetch this directly using dependency injection. Now the only thing we'll be using right now is a send grid key. So if you want you can remove the user but maybe for some other purpose if you want to use it, I'll leave it here. What we will do is within our utility we will add a new class and we'll call this email option. I'll make it plural email options. There we go. Yes, looks good. It will be a public class here. And then we need two properties here. What are those two properties? One is the send grid key and the second one is the send grid user. So we'll do prop string send grid user. So we need to populate both of these values inside class from our app settings.json. In order to load this using dependency injection, what we will do is we will go to startup.cs and in here we have the email sender and i email sender. After that we will say services.configure and what class we want to configure it is the email options and how do we want to fetch that? We want to fetch that using the configuration. We'll do control dot here. What will happen because of this is it will try to match whatever is inside email options in our app settings and if the name matches which is send grid key and user it will automatically populate them here. And once we get the key our task will be accomplished inside the email sender. Let's complete the email sender in the next video. Inside our email sender we will need the send grid key and we will get that using dependency injection. Right here we will have private read only and this will be email options. Let's call this email options. We will have a constructor CTOR. Here we will get I options. We'll do control dot because we have that in here the email option class which we will pass here and we will get all of the options. Then we will say email options is equal to options.value. This is what you have to do if anytime you have to load anything from app settings.json, you can add a class like this and then using i options, you can always configure independence injection to get the values. Now email options will have send grid key as well as user. We will only be using the key right now. We have the send email async here. What I can do is I can just return and call execute here. And in here I will pass the key which is email options dot send grid key comma I will have the subject and I will have message followed by email. Now inside execute you need to add the same parameters and we'll make it just task string send grid key comma string subject comma string message comma string email in here we do not need the api key we already have that we need a variable client is equal to new send grid client here we'll have to do control dot to include the package for send grid we'll find and install the latest version it automatically installs the NuGet package. We have to pass the key here, which is send grid key. 
then we need the email address we'll do control dot here for sendgrid.helper.mail now from email we can do anything we want like admin at bulky.com and we'll call this bulky books subject we'll just remove that because we are getting it right here and we'll pass that to is a new email address and right here we'll call this email comma and user then we have the plain text content that we want to display and then we have the HTML content right now we only have a single message so in here we can just pass message in the HTML content we can pass an empty string if you were using templates then we will be passing those templates in the HTML that being said we will just call the send email async and we won't wait for the execution to complete with that being done right here we will make this method a private and this looks good also the response here will just return back rather than saving in a variable and then returning back so all we had to do to send email is to implement the execute method now whatever we will pass here that will automatically send email accordingly if you want message and html message as different we can add two strings here and then you can pass it down inside the execute accordingly but this looks good for what we have it's time to test our application in order to test that let me add a debugger and run the project i will add a couple of more debugging points here and now what we will do is using an email address that is valid let's register an account so we'll go to register so we have a valid email here let's register once you register you can see the control is going here because we have the code to send email if you hit continue here it goes to the send email async we have the message here let's hit continue perfect it executes it we are not awaiting here so it just returns back and it will go back and sign the user in now let's go to gmail to see if we received any email perfect right here you can see we have confirm your email and it says please confirm your email account by and we have the url here what we want to do next is let me stop the application and i want to show you what will happen if we pass the message in the html message let me rerun the application and we will resend the confirmation email we have that option if we log out we can log in here and we have the recent email confirmation we will have our email and we'll click recent email confirmation it gets here email looks good let's continue continue and it should send a new email let's go back and validate that and we have another email this time you can see rather than static string it is displaying the html correctly you can see the difference here between html and now html is being rendered so if you are using template you should pass your message inside the html content once you click here we see thank you for confirming your email so with this our email has been confirmed now we have the email functionality that is working with our html templates as well as if you just want to send some text in an email you can use the same execute method to send order status and the other updates if you want if you take a look at the register you can see how they are calling it all they have to do is await underscore email sender which we will get using dependency injection right here once you have that email sender inside that email sender you can call the send email async as soon as the place the order once you ship it or however you wish so perfect everything looks good now